Hey, that was quick. You guys caught me unawares. Uh, um, hey, guys, Chiclones. How are we doing? Are we a minute early? We're about a minute early, so we'll just wait. No, we won't. Um, there's Beetle Guy. Hey, welcome to the show. We are going to learn some stuff today. This is maybe the most requested topic I've ever had. So, uh, which is to say seven people requested this topic pretty much at the same time. So we're going to talk tonight about shipping, um, how to get things where they should be in the shape they should be in. So we're not going to talk about specific like APHIS or permits or any of that BS. That's another whole other ball of wax. Do that research on your own. That is a super snooze. So we're not <laughs> going to do that. Just Google it. It's fine. You'll figure it out. So we did hit 401. We did it. We crossed the 400 barrier. To those of you that got one other person to join, I appreciate it. Um, to those of you that kept unsubbing and subbing to mess with me, uh, I hope your toothpaste runs out at an awkward moment. That's all. That's the only curse. Um, so anyway, yeah, we're going to talk about shipping. We have Rachel from Pet Peds and Pods. Some of you may remember, may remember her as our very first guest on the show. Uh, so she's a longtime friend of the show, and she has some props for us today. I don't know what that means, but I hope it means boxes because boxes are so cool um okay tennyson aaron's isopods is here i don't know that i know aaron's isopods i don't remember everybody sandy's gonna be here if she's not here already but yeah we're gonna learn how to ship let me bring rachel in and she is very awesome and ready to spend some time with us here we go rachel welcome back hi glad to be here good are you gonna play flute for us today is the first question i have I, I was not planning on it, no. No, but if anybody wants to come to Ohio, I do have a concert on Sunday with the orchestra. So if you'd like to see me play flute, you got to come to Ohio for it. It is time. Ohio. I was right, yes. you guys. I guessed Ohio, yes. and um, I, knew it was a, I knew it was a vowel. I knew it was a vowel, but I wasn't sure. Idaho. Really Ohio. narrowing it down there. Yes. Yeah. Cleveland yeah. area it's like Ohio. Cleveland area. So if you guys are in the Cleveland area and hit a show, you'll probably meet Rachel and Trevor. Is it? Travis. Travis. Oh my God. See, it was either Idaho or Travis. You were so. real close. You were real close on all of them. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, let's get started. So, what is the first thing I need if I want to ship besides my recipient's address? Okay. So, you're going to need a box to put them thing? in. It's a box. You need yeah. a box. And. Don't cheap out on the box. Get an insulated box. You want the styrofoam. So, let's see, I told you I brought pop, props. You did. So this is a, this is a recycled box. So this is the exact box that I buy. Yep. So. Yep. I just threw out one of those. So styrofoam all the way in there. Styrofoam on the top. Nice. And then yeah, I just pack it. I do a lot of recycled paper because we get an unbelievable amount of junk mail. So it works out. Yes. Um, so I just do you know. Put, put your cups in there, pack them in with the, um, you know, with your newspaper or whatever. So There's more things, but I don't know Rachel. if you have more questions. So. I do. I do. So, and, and you already passed by one, which we're going to get back to. But if you guys order from Rachel, you'll get not only quality animals, you'll get some coupons possibly. So that no one puts For Ohio, probably. So, yeah. Yep. So go to Ohio. Get your groceries and then come home. <laughs> there uh, you go. Don't pick up ice pods because you won't get a coupon. So, well, you might. I don't know. Um, there's a special coupon in every box. You could run that promo. <laughs> might not be no useful. They might be expired, but they're here. But it's there. You didn't it's say it was there. useful or, or not expired. This is true. Um, this is true. Yeah, so guys, I shipped to Rachel, and it was a travesty. So um, it was my first and only time shipping so far. So and it was uh, it was bad. So Rachel, what did I do wrong when I shipped? Oh, to you? oh, all right. Well, uh, I do I do recall you shipping to me. I do recall I being a disaster. You do. Um, well, so first of all, you did not have a box <laughs> at all. No, in no. fact, no. You uh, I you did had not. a. If I recall correctly, you had a six quart bin that you filled with dairy cows and yes. then you put it in an envelope and you taped it up, thankfully, <laughs> and then you shipped it to me. Um, a shocking amount of them actually survived this trip. Um, yeah. 
a shocking amount of them were just loose in the envelope, which thankfully you had taped very well. <laughs> um, I don't remember if you had any temperature control in there. I think it was just a bin in an I did on the there, top. I, I had some of the okay. packs. Okay. But they were yeah, like it's, it's been a minute. shitty ones you get at a gas station or something. They weren't. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. weren't the good ones. I have the good ones now. Um, just sitting here waiting for the next time I'm because I'm terrified to ship now. Um, but <laughs> but I can do it again someday, but this is not that day. Um yeah. yeah, it was bad. It was bad, you guys. And uh yeah. I went into the the um I think it was U, U, uh, UPS. I think it was UPS. I think it was and I think it was UPS. No? I think it was I think it was the post office. I think it was just regular mail. No, because I didn't go to the post no? office. I went to okay. I'm fairly certain it was UPS because it was two days. Um it was a two okay. day thing and that like the next day or whatever was gonna be like two hundred dollars or something. Um hey, but two days is good. Day. That's that's typically what I do. Two days is good. So that's yeah. yeah. Good job on that. Yeah. And it was still like I was like, oh god. Who ships this all the time? Um, shipping cost is what gets people. Yes. Um, but yeah, don't skimp on your supplies, you guys. Like I really, I had the bin in my hands when, when I went to the store, the UPS store. And that was it. I had no box, no insulation. I had the, the ice packs, but that was it. I think they were like, yeah, they were really crappy. Um, which, yeah, I'm glad everybody showed up. They probably used their dead friends for insulation. Probably, um, yeah. That's my guess. Yeah. It it was so. I I opened that and I was like, oh, these are all dead. And then I got in there and I was like, no, actually they're not. Like it was a it was a solid amount that made it. But I, I'm not saying this to like encourage other people. I'm just saying like I was pleasantly surprised yeah. that there there were live ones in there. Yeah. It was sheer yeah. luck. It was sheer luck. They could have been, yeah. it could have been like a shrimp yeah. salad in there. And um yeah, I felt awful um when I heard about it. And I will it, tell you, opening time, up Opening up a warm box of dead isopods is never a good time. It the smell no is not good. No. I haven't had that happen yet. I haven't had any of those like awful situations. I've had stuff get caught in the mail for like a week or two. And yeah. it was packed well and everything was mm -hmm. fine. And if it was like cooler weather, I don't order things like in high summer or winter um in Illinois. That's our mail people are too stupid. So yeah not good but um this hopefully this helps people to be able to ship in whatever weather so um which brings me to the next legitimate question so you guys heard about what not to do just now a little bit there's probably a million other things not to do but let's get into what to do so you put out your box and then you mm -hmm. just pulled out your prop box if you could bring that out again that would be awesome now let's pull out okay that's awesome so let's pull out a piece of that styrofoam there's a cube of a box, right? This is essentially a cube. Yeah. So you want now. Good thing, sorry, from. Yeah. What is that like? Half inch? Maybe. Maybe an inch. I have a measuring tape. Let's find out. Inch. All right. All right. That's about about three quarters, maybe. Three quarters. Okay. Yeah. So now. Here's and this is a though. standard, oh. this is standard, like a standard box. Like I buy these from reptiles to you. So they just okay. like make this as a kit and you get a big box. It, they ship them flat. So you get all your boxes flat and all your starting from flat. And then you just have to put them together. So they ship you. Okay. So that's the question. Now, did yeah. you always do that? Because I was going to ask, how do you no, cut the styrofoam? I, like, what do you use to cut the styrofoam? I, so no, I've never cut styrofoam. Um, I've tried a, a few different like brands okay. of boxes and this is the most cost effective one um that i've found personally they make this is a seven by seven by seven and then there's also a 12 by nine by six i think that i use for for larger shipments um okay. and what's nice is depending well depending on what service you're using but like for me um those ship for like about the same rate um okay for, from like a like a cubic volume standpoint so that's that's nice yeah yeah um, sorry, I'm struggling with this today. So I've never cut styrofoam. I don't have time for that. And I don't have the space for that. And I just, it's a, like a huge disastrous mess. So I just buy the boxes and it comes with the styrofoam. Totally understand. The sizes that you need. Yeah. 
So you get it from the company. And that was Reptiles yeah. Express. Is that what? Okay. Reptiles to you. I'll put that link. Reptiles to you. Oh, reptiles to you. I'm going to put that link in the in the bottom there. Reptiles. I got to write that down. Hold on, because I'll forget. And there's, um, I mean, there's probably okay, three so or four well, different companies that have basically the same thing. So it's just, you know, shop around for what's going to work. Well, we're going to promote you them. And, yeah. Yeah. Reptiles to use. Who I, well, we'll I, don't them and, from them. I don't actually ship with them, but um, they don't seem hey, to care. So don't tell are, them. It's fine. Supplies are good, right? Don't yeah. tell them. <laughs> I'm sure they know. I'm sure they know. I, they're like, this person's uh, never shipped with us, yet she buys boxes all the time. She's stockpiling boxes and going to ship 5,000 things at once. <laughs> Home Depot is the best place to get supplies if you plan to cut your own styrofoam. Tennyson with the win here. Question about boxes and insulation. Uh, do you buy boxes with insulation or buy boxes and then buy insulation separately? Me spots, you're gonna have to rewind a little bit, so we're not gonna cover that again. But yes, we covered that just now. And the answer to your question, yes. Full kit. <laughs> to answer your kit. five questions, yes. yes. Full kit. Full kit. You get it all. We're gonna put the link in the down there part. Um, got a couple links down there already, which I've been more prepared lately. Um, okay, so we we don't know how to cut styrofoam. Uh, if anyone knows in the comments section, drop that down. Uh, what kind of space are you using for your shipping area? Like, I know you have a staging area, basically. Uh, so Travis you have a higher boxes, volume than probably of, I would. Yeah. Yeah. So we keep, we keep everything just like in the flat ship boxes until I need them. And then he'll make me like a batch of boxes at a time, like based on how many I need. I only ship on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, so I usually know going in the weekend about how yeah. many boxes I'm going to need. And then he'll just build me that plus a okay. few extra and good to go so yeah and i i do yeah and i i get everything because I, I work during the day like full time um so i get everything ready to ship the night before and then they go out in the morning the the following okay. day so. this is good advice from green jet i might get a cut cut foam with a hot wire i just use a karate method and it's not working out <laughs> really good um <laughs> So it's no, Can't it's not working out really well. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, you feel real tough <laughs> blasting through styrofoam. Um, we did use the styrofoam before I threw it away as um, karate stuff for the neighbor kids. There's an eight and a four year old, and we had a blast with that. Um, they did feel really tough blasting through those, those uh, styrofoam messes. So your staging area, though, like, so you're getting boxes, let's say. Obviously, you're going to ship more than most. You've got a successful little business there sending all these things out. And and I think a good part of that is the success that you have getting animals to the the buyers. Um, so what kind of, when you're setting up, you're getting ready like, okay, this is Monday morning or Sunday night. I've got my boxes over here, my box pile. I've got, yep. do you bring out all the bins together or just the, like, I mean, you're bringing out the bins of the things you sold right? Not every. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically the process is I'll go through, um, I print out, I, I have a, um, a thermal printer that I use to do all my labels for my cups and stuff and also my, my shipping labels. Um, so I'll go through, I'll make a list of everything that I need to like get ready. I print out the labels for that. And then I have like a, like a standing table. So I'll just do all my packing at the table. I pack up all the, you know, all the bugs that are going out. Um, and I do um, cups with moist but not wet sphagnum moss for the vast majority of stuff. Sure. I'll ship a couple of things on paper towel here and there. Um, but for the most part, it's just on like clean, unused sphagnum moss. Um, and then, you know, get that all together, get it all labeled. And then when those are all ready, I go through and I tape them all up um, so the cup lids don't come off. So that's kind of yeah. a process in itself. And then I go through, I make all my labels. I print out all my labels and then I just go through like each box. I get the box, I get what's supposed to go in it, put the label, you know, anything else that needs to go in it. And then that box is ready for the next morning. And I, so I pack them all up, I stack them up. And then in the morning before I leave for work, I put all the temperature control in and tape them up. So they're ready to go. Okay. How often, I just heard a story, I'm not going to name names, but I just heard a story about a shipment that kind of went awry. So somebody got, somebody else's pods, like the orders got switched basically. So um, it happens. It happens. It's not, I'm not trash talking who it 
who did it or who it happened to. So one guy got the other guy's pots and they, they flipped. So what, um, what do you do in a situation like that? Has that ever happened to you first? Yeah. One, one time I had two people with the same first name and almost identical, but not identical orders. So, um, wow. so yeah, so I swapped them. So one of them emailed me and they were like, Hey, I don't think this is my order. And I was like, okay, what do you have in your box? And they told me, and I said, oh yeah, no, that's this guy's order. Well, second guy never noticed until I emailed them and said, hey, <laughs> what do you have in your box? Because it's not your stuff. And they didn't even notice. Um, and so I just reshipped to both of those people what they were missing. And then it was just, you know, whatever you got that wasn't yours, that's yours to keep, obviously. You're not going to send it back. Um, so yeah, I just reshipped to both people with the correct items that they didn't get in the first shipment. Says here, that's the right answer. Okay. Oh, so far, excellent. Doing good. That's good. three right I'm answers glad. out of 10. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so far an A. Um, extra credit for for being honest about my horrible shipping practices um, that, are, that are adjusted. I'm going to use this video too. Um, okay. So you have your bins. You're doing your counts. This is a big deal to me because um, having to count out those dairy cows um, and whatever else I've sold in person for pickup. Um, mm -hmm. is literally by the thousand. So, because you get so many of these ice pots, it's crazy. So what's your count method? Because mine was painstaking and awful. Um, so I'm not, I don't do, um, I don't do wholesale. So I'm not doing like large bulk amounts. So I'm usually doing, you know, okay. 10 counts ish. Um, so, and I always do over counts always on the isopods. Sure. Um, so, you know, because you don't know what's going to happen, you know, maybe one of them miss molts in a cup or whatever on, on the way. And, you know, I never sure. want to be in a situation where somebody got nine when they should have had 10. So I will, I will always overcount um, even on the expensive stuff, just because, you know, it's, I think that doing that makes it a better experience for the customer because, you know, they open it up and they go, oh, one's dead, but I got still got the amount that I need no further action is required. Um, and plus it's reducing, like if something happens, you know, I don't want to have to reship for something that small, you know, it's okay. We're short one yeah. isopod or whatever. I don't want to have to reship because, you know, I'm going to pay for that. Um, so yeah, I always do overcounts and, um, you know, obviously did you have the live arrival guarantee? So, you know, if something happens and they are all dead or a significant amount of them is dead, you know, obviously I'll, I'll reship that at no cost to the customer. As long as they tell me in a reasonable amount of time, I've only ever had, and I don't have a lot of claims on live arrival, but you know, things happen sometimes. And I only ever had one claim that I denied and it was because somebody contacted me eight days later, eight days, eight days later. And uh, my policy is four hours, which is, is pretty generous. Most people are about one. Uh, and this person contacted to me eight days later with a very strange story. And I was like, uh, no. Very strange <laughs> that story. Yeah. It was, it was a weird, yeah, helicopter it was a, ride. It was a yeah. weird situation. And yeah. So. Yeah. Unreal. Unreal. <clears throat> I'm surprised at how versatile they are. Like, I'm not versatile. Um, I can think of the word that I'm looking for, like adaptive. They can uh, take a lot of temperatures that they wouldn't normally have in the wild. Um, yeah. and still be fine yeah. for short periods of time. Um, this is the trick question. So this is going to be a tough one. You might get, you're at four out of four right now. This is, this is the tough one. Okay. Right. All in right the middle. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. I haven't been to pet peeds and pods in a while, so I don't know the answer to this ahead of time, but do you offer six counts and when are you going to stop doing that? Uh, I do <laughs> offer twofer. six counts on, uh, <laughs> not too much stuff. Cause I, I agree with you. Um, yeah. I would rather not some of the stuff where I just don't have a, like the inventory to do it. I'll do six counts on. Um, I try to usually when I get to the point where I'm in a really good shape of the colonies, rather than like doing price adjustments, I'll just do quantity adjustments. So like same price, but more. So instead of a six count now, it's a okay. 10 count. Um, but I mean, there are yeah, some things where, you know, yeah, but, but my six counts are also seven counts. So. You know, that's well, sure, you know, sure, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah I want and some things, you know, I'll, I I'll count, yeah, but I don't want to pay for a 10 yeah. count. Yeah, yeah well, and you that's the I other thing cheap. is some things, uh, some things like like rubber duckies, I'll offer them in, uh, I offer them in a 10 and a seven count because sometimes people still 
want a group, but they don't want to pay for a 10 count. And so some things I'll offer like a six or a 10, you know, so it's, it's up to you how many you want to get. Some of that I kind of get, like, that's been the thing with me for a long time. You probably know, like I'm so anti six count. It's crazy. And I get it. I get the budget thing. Um, I get like, this is what I have to offer. Um, and I see like, it's your choice. If you buy a six count, it's your choice. It's the, the yeah. person who bought it. You could be like, no, no six count for me. Um, I bought two six counts because I thought that they were two 10 counts at half price. <laughs> I didn't read the fine print. <laughs> that wasn't even fine print. It was like right there. And I yeah. was like, this is a really good price. Like, I'm just going to get two. I'm going to get 20 of these guys. It was my destroy. Um, and it was from um, Pod Solo. And so he and I go back and I messaged him afterwards. I was like, hey, man, I didn't read this, but thank you. <laughs> for overcounting a little bit anyway. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I did get like 12 or so, or 13 or 14 instead of 12, but it was, yeah. I was like, oh, I bought six counts and I talk trash about them all the time. Um, I have softened. So if that's what you can afford and that's a way for you to get them, um, I don't think most breeders that I've had, none of the breeders I have on the show, what I suspect would be like, oh, that's a male. Here's six males. Ha ha ha, you're yeah. not a competitor. Um, <laughs> absolutely knows. not. No, that's a lot of time unless you're selling like Hoffs or Spanish orange or something that's easy to differentiate. Um, yeah, like if you're gonna sex out armadillidium, hey, be that guy, I guess. Um, don't let me find out. So <laughs> I'll trash you in the comments. Well. <laughs> so, all right, so we went over six counts. You a pretty good answer. That was a trick question. I'll give you, I'll give you so far, you're doing good. Um, is there differences when you're packing different species of ice pod or and millipedes? I guess they pretty much ship the same. Or do you try to keep it like it's just a generic? The packing so so packing method is typically the same. However, what uh, temperature control technology and what temperatures I'll ship at will depend on what's going out in that box. Um, there are some things where I will, so, and I guess let's talk about this now. So temperature tech, so heat pack, and then phase change. Nice. So heat pack is obviously okay. self-explanatory, you know, it makes, it's, it's hot and it's hot the whole time. The phase changes are really cool because you can send them either set to heat or set to cool. So if it's, if it's frozen, like it is here at room temperature, it will melt in warm weather to maintain ambient temperature in the box so like room temperature in the box if it's melted and it's cooled outside it will freeze sure. to then you know basically do the opposite to keep it that that temperature in the box and what's nice is in like the shoulder months where it's like you know pretty mild weather outside um you can ship just with the cryo packs and i also use them just as cold packs too um though sometimes in like like, like this week, I shipped a couple things at the beginning of the week, and I sent them with multiples, with multiple of the cryo packs frozen. Um, I've seen that. So it just too. depends. Yeah, one on the top. Yeah. The so, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you can use the heat packs and the face change packs together. So if it's, you know, say it's cold during the night but warm during the day and you're like well i want to have a heat pack but i don't want it to overheat or maybe it's cold where i am but it's warm where you are um you can do a heat pack with a frozen face change pack in between the animals and the heat pack so that way you still get the warmth from the heat pack and then the um the face change pack will take any excess heat and keep it from overheating in where the critters are. Cause I've had that, like I've got in boxes like that where people put the heat pack right on top of them and they're cooked by the time you get them, even though it's cold outside. So you wanna make sure that you have a space between, you know, the animals and your heat pack always. You wanna have that void. So you gotta, you know, use your packing material in between there, but you can also use the, the face change pack in between um, as an extra buffer as well. See, I like that. I've gotten boxes like that with both and I was confused. I was like, what is the, yeah. why would you do both? Um, it yeah. kind of made sense like, thinking about it, but it took me a little bit to be like, I didn't want to message him like, uh, it looked like a dummy. So, but hey, ask questions. You don't, the yeah. only stupid question is the one you don't ask or you did on purpose. Looking at you, Biggs. 
Uh. Yeah, and I've I've actually had people ask that. They're like, why were there two heat packs in here? And I was like, well, they're they're not actually two heat packs. It's you know, one's a heat pack, one's a, and then you know, you explain it to them. Like, oh, okay. It has that balance. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but but that helps a lot, especially if it is kind of different temperatures where you're shipping from to where they're going to. Um, but also, you know, if you've got different daytime, nighttime temperatures, I mean, I ship year round. Um, and I do, I do cut off at any, like if we're over 90, I'm not shipping or if you're over 90 or if it's, you know, in, in that general range. Um, yeah. and then if it gets really, really cold out, I'll, I'll hold them. But I, I have to hold orders more for heat than I do for cold. Um, and that's just because, you know, if it's cold outside, I know like if it's a low of, you know, 30, I know it's not going to get any colder than that. But if it's hot outside, if it's 80 degrees outside, well, it could be 140 on the track. So that yeah. you have to take that into account that it can end up being a lot um, hotter than anticipated, depending on where it's they at. They can just cook in that truck and it's a shame. Yeah. So, or like even hold for pickup is not foolproof all the time. Right. So, um, so you want to err on the side of cool, as I was saying, or side of cold, if you're going to make it air, shoot for the cold. Well, I'm just saying it's less, like for me, shipping in cold is less scary than shipping in hot, just because, okay. you know, you, you know what the limit is. But that's just because I've been doing this for a while and I know like, okay, this is what I need to do in, in cold temperatures and in heat, you know, there's just, it's a little less control over um, what's going on. That's why we're asking you because you know what you're talking about. So now how many, uh, what would you say in an average, uh, I don't want to say month or week, but like average week, how many boxes are coming out of the, the Schindler Beach uh, uh, farm? <laughs> Schindler Beach Acres. That's a good question. I, I have that information. Stand by. I don't ship Did as you? much as you think I do. I do. I have those numbers. Hold on. But... I don't think anybody ships as much as I think they do. Yeah. Um, the majority of my business is, is More in shows, person. Right? Yeah. The majority of my business yeah. is in person. Um, I do, and it depends on the time of the year, but I do 30 or 40 a month is usually about what I have. So if that answers your question. Well, 30, 40 a month is not, that's not bad. Yeah. No. I feel like iSpots are a great little like side business until you get to those numbers where it's like, let's just do this. Um, I think, yeah, I think you don't ship as much as I thought you did. But I do see your booth. I've seen your booth, what, twice now, I think, um, at the shows, and it's, it, it's packed. Yeah, it's packed. Well, when we shows. do. So, um, yeah, we do we do 50 plus shows a year. So, we do a lot more business in person. Oh, wow. Than online. Yeah. It's like one a week. Yeah, yeah, it is. That is that is one a week. Mm -hmm. Probably not so Christmas, sometimes, right? Well, December gets crazy because we usually have three or four in a weekend because <laughs> they all kind of stack in December. Yeah, okay. yeah. So there's um, there's a couple local ones that um, tend to be on the same weekend, so it'll be a Saturday Sunday. Um, so that kind of helps. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, it's. It's three, three to five a month is typically what it is. And it just depends on, um, like I'm going to be, we're doing Rexpo this coming weekend in New York. And that only happens a couple times a year. Um, and then we've got uh, three local shows that we do every month. And then there's a fourth that is every other month. Here's my shame. And I hope we all learn together. I'm in Illinois. <laughs> is Ohio east of me? <laughs> Or west of me. Ohio <laughs> is east know. of you. <laughs> it's I of don't you. know. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. See, I'm learning. Geography is not my, uh, never had any interest in it. I know the states that touch my state, most of them, and that's about it. I know Wisconsin and uh, uh, Indiana. That's it. That's all I got. And I, uh, Iowa. Iowa's on the other side. Those people drive like crazy people, so don't go to Iowa, you guys. Just fly over um oh i see somebody in the comments is also going to be at rexpo so that's cool stop by and say hi we'll be there who's going to be there the fishy oh, plumber. Sandy. who's that the, the plumber? fishy plumber <laughs> i'm just, I'm just reading the names 
that's a new face. I might be calling you Fishy Plumber. We have some issues going on here at the house. Um, not with fish. So uh, the other side of it. Um, yeah, I got to turn into a handyman this last three weeks, and I'm exhausted right now. Like my body finally was like, enough's enough. I was going to ship out my jobs, but I couldn't get a box. Um, what was my next question? So when you're shipping, are you shipping? Does everybody have a snack in the box? Uh, not typically, because um, there's some regulations against doing that. Really? Okay, we won't get into yeah. that, but I didn't know that. Okay, don't do carrots, guys. So not they, even like... they, they would prefer okay. that there be nothing else in there other than what you're shipping. And I mean, most things, it's they're okay. going to be fine in for two days. So, and they can munch on the moss a little bit if they want. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they could. They'll be fine with nothing for two days. Not even bother each other. So, was that another spam call? No, oh, I had an alarm going off. I get the spam calls like crazy now. It's <laughs> all day, every day. Um, this morning, we had a shelter in place call at 5. 15 in the morning. Oh, geez. Uh, everybody, yeah, we had some carjackers or something that came from Chicago and they caught them here. And there were helicopters and dogs and drones. And I was like, gotta go to work. I'll see you later. <laughs> gotta do what right. do. That's not. Yep. Yep. I swiped <laughs> that call away. I was like, oh, what is this? And then a second one came in right away. I was like, wait a minute. What? What is happening? Um, that's a scary wake up call, you guys. Up. Yeah. Right? It was like, uh, and when I went out to work, every single neighbor on my block was outside looking like, do you not guys not understand what shelter in place means? Apparently not. So yeah, that was, it was a crazy morning, but, um, back to the task. So you're not shipping in temperatures. What is the temperature cutoff? What are you looking at? You said like 90, so 90 on the high end. Yeah. Or, or close to it. I mean, on, okay. on below that, sometimes they'll look at it and go, no, we're not doing that. And it kind of depends on what the nighttime temps are too, but I have a hard cutoff at 90. So like, if you look at your weather and it's 90, it's not coming to you. Um, right. And then low end, low end, it'll just kind of depend on, you know, daytime, nighttime temperatures. And, and that's more of a, let's see what the temperatures are on either end and kind of nice. make a call. Nice. Yeah. And then you check, so you check everybody's temperature where they're at and yeah. see where it's going. Okay. And you said you're not shipping out that many. So that's not that big of a task. Right. Probably. It's, I'm, I'm blowing it up in my head. Like that's hundreds of orders a week. They no. are looking up their address. It's not. No. Um, yeah. I just, when I, when I determine what kind of temperature controls going in the box, I just look up because, because it'll be different temperature control depending on where it's going to, you know, not everybody this week is going to get a heat pack. Sometimes they're in, in the like spring and fall. Sometimes it's crazy. I'll have, I'll have boxes going out with heat pack and I'll have boxes going out with a cold pack and it just depends or, you know, both. <laughs> and it just depends on where it's going and what the dumps are like. So. It depends on what side of Illinois they're going yeah. to. Yeah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and and keep in mind too, yeah. What side of Illinois? Keep in mind too, you know, depending on what shipping service you're using, um, can depend on, you know, <clears throat> what temperatures are like. Depends on what kind of shipping service you're using. So like, I've had times where, you know, somebody has been waiting for months. We finally get a little bit cooler window, and it might be ninety during the day where they're at. But if I ship overnight to them and they get it in the morning you avoid those, those high temperatures. Okay. So I've had times like that where, you know, the, cause I, I don't, um, my standard service is two days. Um, if you put in like a big order, I'm probably going to ship it one day. Um, but then like people have the option to upgrade too. You know, if, if it's, you know, yeah, I can't ship this two days to you because it's too hot. I've had people that have, you know, upgraded to one day and we just ship it, you know, overnight and avoid all that. And that makes a lot of go. sense. So that's, yeah, at least it's moving. Yeah, it's not sitting on a truck overnight, yeah. cooking it before they get, you know, before right. the guy even gets in the truck. Um, yeah. And, and something to keep in mind, too, hat. with temperatures um, is it's not just highs and lows, but look at the difference between where they're starting from and where they're going to. Because if it's too big of a difference, sometimes you just can't compensate for that. Um, so I've had times where I'll hold something, even though it's technically within safe temperatures but if it's like really cold here and like 70 there like that can be an issue because you just like can't safely do that so you got to wait for the the weather to even have a little bit yeah how do you compensate for that that would be weird like have it you can't tell yeah. them to have it stop halfway and switch out the pack or something. exactly you know? yeah 
<laughs> yeah. Here you go. Hey, it's instructions on there. How much extra is that going to cost? Um, speaking of, who do you use as your primary shipping? Uh, I company? ship with I ship with UPS. Okay, and they're super reliable. Everything yeah. tends to get there. Perfectly. Yeah, I had maybe two or three issues with them in okay. four years, three years. Yeah, it's pretty solid. It's yeah. a pretty solid record. Yeah. Um, and then you have species you don't ship unless it's like optimal. Like I got your um, the ornate um, harvestman. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. They lasted a long time. I never did get babies, but they lasted a little over a year, I think. That's um, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, and they're pretty cool um, when you can find them. Uh, <laughs> I searched high and low to make sure they were all gone when I moved that box, but um, I tended it well after I thought they had passed. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And I believe those came in a with the paper towel. And I'm probably for the harvest Yeah, yeah, because they're shift as much, right? Yeah. They won't like. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, those guys are really delicate. Um, yeah. I believe any harvestman would be. So there are different techniques for different species, obviously. But uh, you're primarily millipedes and pods. Yeah. I mean, really Still. mostly, okay. mostly pods. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. And some spiders and they've been much... doing. Uh, oh. Yeah, jumping spiders. So that's that's the hotness right now. I still have to get somebody yes. to talk about jumping spiders. It, it's been I have not been able to book that guest yet in three years. So we'll find somebody. I promise. All right. Um, Sounds good. I had. <laughs> I had a question that popped into my head and then it stopped. We were talking about shipping, temperature variance. It'll come back. It'll come back. It was a, a, a question that popped off and it deleted out of my brain. She keep giving me new information that I hadn't considered yet. Um, when you're doing overnights, that's a pretty significant cost increase, is it not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, it depends. UPS is pricing. So, so UPS gives you an option of next day and they give you a couple different options so there's next day early which is basically your overnight but then there's yeah. next day where it's just like next business day um so unless there is a you know unless there's that reason where you're trying to avoid the highs or whatever um like the next day isn't like it costs more than two day but it's not like a prohibitively larger amount to do just next day versus two day um and what's nice is with UPS, um, like ground shipments even will get to places in one or two days, depending on distance from, you know, where they are for me. So like if I ship to Ohio, I can ship ground and it will for sure be there in one day. And a lot of the surrounding states, um, it's either one or two days with ground. So that helps me a little bit because I do flat rates. So it's just, um, you know, it's whether I'm shipping well, Ohio gets a discounted rate, but whether I'm shipping, you know, next state over to California, I charge the same amount and then uh, it just kind of evens out yeah. on my end. I mean, I still end up losing money on shipping, but everybody loses money on shipping. Yeah, it definitely is going to be yeah. eating into your profits, which is one of the things that's good about ice pods and millipedes is if you know what you're doing, you just keep replenishing stock. Um, <clears throat> so that part, you don't have to like buy and flip or whatever, the, you know, it's just keeps coming. Um and it's great. We still have buyers. Like it's still a big deal, which is yeah. cool. There's still people looking for those species or to replenish or update their, uh, their genetics a little bit if they can. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to be getting harder to do unless you're really tracking like who has what from where. Because right. uh, we have so many people that have like your stock or Wally's stock or, you know, then they buy from each other and it's the same thing. So be careful with that, guys. Check your pedigrees. <clears throat> See where your people got their stuff from or if they're mixing it up. Um, God, the question came back to my brain and it popped right out again. Shipping from USPS, different species. It's a good question, too, I promise. <laughs> we keep getting into more information. Um, now, do you do supplies? Do you do, like, any... I do. leaves or bark or whatever mm -hmm. okay and that can go out whenever whatever yeah 
are those going out in yeah, and more or uh i mean it just depends on what people are looking for um sometimes it's it's unusual for me to get a supplies only order um we do but it's usually like it'll be a combination with things um and the way the website does it it always like make separate boxes. So it's like, this is a box for live items and this is the box for supplies. And then a lot of times I can combine them down into one. And so then I just refund the, the hard okay. shipping, but it depends on what people are buying. So buy a bunch of stuff together, you guys will save on shipping. That's the message Maybe. we're having today. As long as I can get it in the box. If I can get it in the box, I will save you on shipping. But. Well, like 10 speeds device pod versus, you know, two. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Box. Well, and and I do offer, I always offer free shipping and on live items of $100 or more. So if your order is $100, you get free shipping. Um, it doesn't combine with supplies because, again, a lot of times that does have to ship separate. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I only charge if you're ordering less than $100, then you will pay shipping. But otherwise, it is free. There you go, guys. You're doing 70 Which, again, I definitely not making money on shipping. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anyone, nobody makes money on shipping. Maybe the eBay sellers that charge the ridiculous amounts, um, but it's definitely not. Yeah, just definitely not your average person who is. You've got your supplies. You've got your drive over there. You've got the time put into it that you know you got to put a price on your time. You got the actual shipping costs. <clears throat> you got to check. You know you got to get your weather satellite in orbit. <laughs> right. <laughs> Everybody's good. Um, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of work and effort and and cost that goes into that shipping so respect people that will give it to you guys um that's a big deal i don't see a lot of that i don't see a lot of like over x amount free shipping um don't try to i see discounts better. for bulk stuff well yeah okay well, i won't say that anymore everybody's doing it don't uh <laughs> don't horn in on my friend's business guys um yeah it's a competitive market out there yeah um, I feel like that's a thing that will cut it down to uh, who they're going to buy from is shipping practices, um, reliability. That was my question. So if you can't ship them to me and you're doing a hold, mm -hmm. I let's say I paid for um, 212, uh, what is it, 10 counts generally from you now? 10 counts, or yeah. 12s, uni 12s. Okay, yes. so two 10 counts of duckies. We'll just say duckies. Um, and it's too hot. So... It's going to be too hot for a month, generally, um, yep. where it's not like you can't pull the trigger and hope for the best. So now you're talking about your stock earlier. So are you looking at your bin and saying, okay, 12 of these or whatever, 10, 210 plus are going to Josh? Okay. All right. And that's, yeah. so you just keep yeah. a track of what's sold. You just got to make sure. How do you keep yeah. track of Yeah. Yeah. Because you'll still have orders coming in. So. Do you put little notes on there or do you have like a, a system? Uh, it depends. It's, it depends on what it is. And it's just, that's more okay. in my brain, but yeah. Okay. Okay. There's gotta be uh, some that it doesn't really matter. You know, like some of your species. Some for sure. It doesn't much. matter it, with some of the more, you know, with, if it's something that's more limited then, you know, I'll just make sure that it's not in stock for other people to accidentally buy whatever it is that you're waiting on. Um, smart, smart. And then, you know, don't pack them for shows or whatever. But yeah. At what level is your um, culture solid enough for you to ship? Like at what, where do you want to keep your cultures minimal, I guess, before you're like, okay, I can sell. Um, that really depends. That is a really good question. Um, and that depends kind of on, so I always want to have adults and juveniles. I think I will probably push some of the higher end stuff a little further than other people will. Cause I know some people want to have like really big quantities of them. Um, and I don't necessarily do that, but I always want to make sure that if I pull this many juveniles out of it, that I still have juveniles for the next generation. You know, I never want to be like, okay, so I have my adults that are producing, they've made some juveniles, I'm going to sell all those juveniles. I don't want to do that because you want to make sure that you still have, you know, continue that culture. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it, it just kind of depends on what I feel comfortable with. 
at the time and what it is and how quickly they're producing. Yeah, because so, some of them are really it's slow. It's certainly producers. not a science. Yeah, it's certainly not a science. It's it's a it's, it's not a like I have twelve of these. I can sell three. <laughs> the three count, you guys. Right. We're heading to the three count now. Um, right. Good luck. Roll those dice. Uh, that's not a good dice roll. Because um, mm -hmm. I always get, I tend to get some adults thrown in and get like pregnant ones that you know I'll have manka in transit. Um, but obviously you're not getting that with juveniles, even though they, they do reproduce at a very early age, right? Like the third mm -hmm. malt yeah. or something. Well, and I, I say juvenile specifically because really? you're asking to me about like quantities, but like, you know, obviously yeah. all I will try to do mixed sizes as much as possible, but for the real high end stuff, sometimes it's, it's just going to be juveniles. So that's what I'm saying. And don't, don't pull all yeah. of the juveniles that you have available at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do it. Keep a mix. Keep a mix. You guys, um, yeah, I like to get a mix when I get the uh, the shipments or if I buy them at an expo or whatever. Because um, I know at some of the expos I've looked to see species in person, um, like the dreams. And because in person, they're so much different than they are in pictures. I've never seen a picture that does them justice. Because um, all the pictures, I'm like, what's the point of this? This Why is this labeled dream? This is ridiculous. Um, and then you see them in person and you're like, Okay. All right. These are pretty cool. Um, but they're tiny. At most expos, they're they're the little guys, and it's hard to see uh, what it is. So I like to, when I get them, I like to see a little bit of a mix. I know some are older, and you can't tell how old they are, but um, you want to see, like, my very first shimmer from Wally was Hoffs, and he sent me a massive adult male um, who didn't live, he lived, like, another couple weeks or something. He died right away. But it was like an extra and he just wanted me to see what potential they had. And I was blown away by that one. Um, that was our original mascot, actually, Mr. Yucky. So <laughs> named by my three-year-old at the time. So um, yeah, I wouldn't mind the old ones to see how big they get. Cause I was shocked at how big duckies get um, mm -hmm. in their old age. But uh, yeah, you don't want to, pile them all on. You don't want to pile all juveniles because they can be at a sketchy time um, with a little more delicate maybe, uh, or they have to watch them grow forever. Some of them are pretty slow growing, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I always so, just specify, like if it's gonna just be juveniles, I'll just specify in the listing, like this is for juveniles, you know, maybe they're, you know, and then, you know, otherwise okay. it's just going to be mixed sizes. But yeah, I, I will specify on that stuff that, so you know. I like that communication. Like that's a really big deal with uh, the breeders is communication. There should be more of that. So don't be afraid to ask your breeder or your, your whoever you're buying from uh, any questions about their stock. Anyone who's reputable will just answer you and not jack around. They'll just come out with an answer. If they're jacking around, maybe cancel your order or, you know, move on because something's going on there. They're, they're pulling something or, or they're not being forthcoming. So I would do that, absolutely. Um, and I've never gotten that from from anybody in my audience right now. So <laughs> you guys are all good guys and girls. Um, I think, does anyone else have any questions? There's something I didn't cover. I thought I had everything and I know I'm forgetting something. Do you have extra advice I didn't cover for shipping? I'm trying to think. So we talked about the box. We talked about packing. We talked about packing them in cups. And taping them up so they don't open up in the box. Um, we talked packs. about temperature control, checking temperatures, shipments. I saw somebody ask about if I was checking the entire route, and the answer is no. I, I check where I am and destination. And that's that's good enough. Yes. The entire route. Do you drive the route? Do you like? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. To go, oh, this is safe. I'm going to go back home and ship this box. Shipping anxiety. How do you get the ice spots from their bin into the cup? Paint brushes are your friends. All right. <clears throat> it's the same thing with ants. Although yeah, I'm not I good bet. at it yet. So just using a paintbrush to scoop them into the cup. Like you put the cup basically in the bin. Yeah, I'll put the empty cup in, in the bin and then just kind of paintbrush them into it. Check my count. And then... Moss okay. goes in after that. Yeah. That's the same good. same thing I do for shows. 
Okay. Okay. So, and sometimes you got to get in there and dig around, but yeah, yeah. Preferably you're just getting them off a piece of bark or whatever with a paintbrush. The bark is the best. If you can get them on the bark, get them on the bark. That's the only way I caught the, the big numbers that I was doing for a minute to try to thin my herd is just take the bark out, basically shake them off, put the bark back, give it an hour, come back, scoop the bark. Um, do you put holes in the shipping box? No. No. Good. Good, good, good. I got a shipment once that the one of the cups cracked or something and opened the box and blew pruinosis. Potter Blues came out at me and I was not ready for that. So there was a little yeah, bit that's of a squeal. Yeah. yeah. And then my wife was upset. It was pretty funny. But um, it wasn't it was fine. Everybody was alive, but it was not it was a weird surprise. Um, get shipping anxiety from ordering online. Can't even imagine what it's like on the shipper. Yeah, it's wild. I get that. Yeah. Not every time because you got to yeah. trust the people that you have. Yeah. Well, and from the shipper uh, perspective, too, like you get to a certain point where you're like, all right, I'm very comfortable with this. But every now and then you'll get an order and you're like, I need to make sure this this makes it there, you know, if it's if it's a, yes. a very large order or whatever. And um, yeah, so those can be a little, a little nerve wracking still, but. Yeah, you just, you got to yeah. trust in, you know, I mean, like I said, I've been doing this a long time and you just kind of trust in, you know, that you know what you're doing. And obviously, you know, if you're just starting out, you you don't have that trust in yourself yet, but um, just make sure that, you know, you've got the right supplies and you're getting them there in, you know, one or two days. And if you're not sure if you can get them there safely, wait, if you're not sure, if you look at the weather and you say, I am not sure that this is going to make it, wait and just communicate with your customer. Well, and I would say the only customers that would have a fit about that is a customer that you kind of don't want to have your hand on this anyway. Exactly. Um, yeah. They don't care I've about what's never, best. I've never had a cust- have a problem with a customer. If I reached out to them and said, hey, I'm going to hold on to this until it's safe to ship. I've never had a customer have an issue with that. I've had customers, because sometimes like if I'm shipping to Texas, we might have to wait five months. Like if you order, <laughs> you know, if you order right before summer, man, you might not be getting that until like October. So you just so put a nice I, little post-it on that bin, like, hey, yeah, when we can ship yeah. this to Pelly, Pelly yeah. McGinnis, uh, whatever lives in Texas. And she and, was saying and earlier. I've, but I've had people, you know, then people very rarely cancel orders if I tell them that it's going to be a long time. Um, and I always try to be upfront with them too, like as, especially like Texas, Arizona. I mean, I've had people wait a long time to get shipments, but they got, the, you know, nobody else gets shipped to them either. So you know, they know if they want to get something shipped, they're, they're going to have to wait until it's safe to ship to them. Yeah, for sure. Um, Wally wants to know why we already covered that you use UPS, but why not yeah. USPS? Uh, USPS just doesn't have the consistency that I need. I want to know that something's going to be there in one or two days. And um, we we ship a lot of uh, Travis's business. He's done quite a lot of shipping with USPS and we've not seen the consistency. It, it could take three days. It could take five days. And it's just... Even even here where we're at, um, I'll have things sent to me uh, one day. It almost never makes it in one day. <laughs> he's he's got somebody never. that he buys stuff for. Him. No, he has somebody that he buys stuff from um, in Michigan for his business. That's not live animal, animals or anything. Yeah. Um, and they will send it um, express one day, and they get their shipping back every single time because it has never made it here on time. Never, not once. Travis sells hand whittled harmonicas, if I remember right. So, <laughs> yes, um, I, that is exactly it. So he gets yes. the wood shims shipped to him. So for an express <laughs> order, uh, <laughs> gotta have that in one day, man. I mean, what are I you have a bamboo one life? here somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a bamboo harmonica here somewhere from Travis. Uh, <laughs> Wally also wants to know how many. I, can you identify this isopod questions you get? Oh, not just isopods, Wally. Just anything that is a bug, bug adjacent, <laughs> might possibly be a bug. Really, any animal on planet Earth, um, I get sent, and I um, I don't mind. I am not going to lie. I don't mind. Um, hey, what's this bug? Most burlariest picture ever. Yeah, that's accurate. Um, I get a lot of those, and family members will, like, be standing, you know, 8,000 feet away from something, like, zooming in, and they're like, what is this? Is this so a brown recluse? No, probably not. 
Um, is this a brown recluse? Yeah. That's the best meme ever. That uh, entomemology, I think, is the group that I have. That every yeah. other meme is a brown recluse, or they, you know, can you yeah. identify this bug for me? And it's like a ladybug, brown recluse, kill it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I just do this show and I get a million of those questions a day, or I'll get what kind of setup would you put this in, and then my brain goes like I'll go into detail about what I would do, but um, you could you could see them in text just like glaze over, and yeah. you could find out when they're like I'm out, I'm out, I'm not doing this, um, or I just Google the animal that they're looking at because I don't know. Half the yeah. time, I don't know all these bugs and different millipedes and whatever else, or I'll ask someone else. I'll send it to you. Like, hey, Rachel, what is this? Mm -hmm. And I won't tell you. Then I talk to that person like, I know, and I feel real smart. Um, tyranids. Oh, Mispods, nice. Tyranids is funny. Anybody that got that Warhammer reference, um, 40K reference, that's a good reference. Um, I was just looking at my old army. I want to repaint it like isopods. The different ice pods. Uh, yeah, Wally says he doesn't mind either, but send back half at least, asking for a better picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that the picture is the worst part. Um, what do we have here? Flying amber from Beetle Guy. Yeah, um, I think it becomes a really good thing, and I think the communication is probably the most important thing about your um, your business. I will say that you are supreme at uh, <laughs> supreme geckos here. Uh, you are excellent. Let's say you are excellent at um, you your communication. No copyright infringement. So, yes, thank you. Yeah, thank we're you. not going to try to capitalize on supreme shipping. Um, no, and, and I mean that is super important, and and that's something I try to be cognizant of too, because you know I have my shipping schedule published on the website. Um, when you put in an order, you get an email with a shipping schedule in it saying, you know, if you order after 6 p.m. on a Monday, you're not going to get it until the next week because I'm already making the orders that are going out tomorrow and we only ship Monday and Tuesday. Um, but yeah. if somebody places an order on Monday or Tuesday, I will still add a note to their order, which generates another email saying, hey, you're scheduled for Monday because people don't read. That, that's something that, that I've learned from running a business is, is people don't read. They, they do not. They don't read. It doesn't matter if you write yeah. it in really yeah. big letters and flashing lights. They will not read it. So I will send them a separate email just saying like, hey, this is what you're scheduled for rather than expecting them to read the automated stuff. Um, if it's early in the week, usually you get later into the week and people understand that you're not going to ship it. But if it's like a Monday, Tuesday, I'll just let them know like, hey, heads up, Monday. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's good. Like, like you said, people don't read. I didn't read when yeah. I got my destroy. I didn't read the most simple. It was right there in the title of the thing. And I didn't read it. I was just like, hey, this is great. Because again, my brain assumes it's like a 10 count or a 12 count. I don't even yeah. think about sixes. You know what I mean? I don't, it doesn't even cross my mind. So I have to really look. That was a lesson learned. So now I look like, oh, this price is really good. Click it. Uh, it's a five plus. Yeah. Uh, so I'll do, I'll do out. you one better on that. So I also sell photo prints on my website okay. of, of things. Okay. And, and and the photo prints are real cheap. I have had people order I've stolen photo a few prints. Of those. <laughs> I have had people order <laughs> photo prints thinking that they were actual animals, even though it cannot be clearer on the listing and on it when you add it to the cart that it is a photo print. It is not a live animal. And I've had a number of people where I'll get like a mixed order where it's like isopods, isopods, photo print, isopods, and I'll email them and I'll go, you know, this is not a live animal, right? And nine times out of 10, no, they did not realize that they were trying to buy the animal. And then you, you just take that out of the order and you're good to go. But that- I have been happened. temporarily duped by, yes, I have been temporarily duped by you and Tanner um, and seen <laughs> like, wow, that's really reasonable. And then been like, oh, it's a print. Okay. A print. Or been like, is this price yeah. for one for one of these? Uh, right. No, it's not an animal at all. Yeah. Dumb, dumb. No, it is not. Because now we it have ice I have been like through, I've been through this listing each. so many times. Like, yeah, yeah. Trying to make it like as clear as possible. This is not an animal. But 
you can only do so much. But yeah, I've, I've had a few of those. So that's another thing is, is, you know, anticipating what your customer is trying to do based on what they actually did. And then just, you know, if you look at something, you go, hmm, I wonder if that's really what they intended to do. You just send them an email and say, hey, is this really what you intended to do? And, you know, yeah. I'll let you know, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. Oh, Wally with the joke. He's tried to purchase postcards on Facebook and got nice pods and stuff. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. That's wild how that works. You're going to get uh, mm -hmm. some groups shut down if Facebook watches this video, Wally. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's confusing. You have to be careful with what you're buying. And I think a lesser shipper would have just sent the pictures and been like, hey, this is what you bought. Uh, sorry, bud. I, I don't know anyone that would do that, but I've seen stuff like that. I, I've bought Lego. I thought I was buying a Lego set. I was buying the instruction book. Um. I didn't know. I didn't read the thing. Yeah. Enough. It, was, yeah. it was there, but it was like hidden kind of. Um, yeah. And that guy was a real jerk about it. But um, I, yeah, I just was like, oh, thank you. Thank you for this instruction book to a set I don't own and for making me read everything now. Um, and the groups, yeah, Pelly's right. The groups, the sales groups are really getting targeted lately. So if you're doing those groups, I'm members of those groups. I don't do anything in those groups. But guys, just be careful. So um, I get moderation alerts constantly in ISO Buddies, and we do zero sales. Um, and I have to decide whether or not to keep it or ignore it. Because it's just conversations. We're just having conversations about whatever. And it, as soon as you put the word sales <clears throat> in there, it's a moderation alert. It's like, eh. yeah. I worry because I get banned all the time for things that I said that are clearly jokes. So I don't want them to like auto ban the group. Right. Do you know what right. I mean? I don't think there's a human yeah. behind it. I don't think there's a human. That's no, like, oh, there's not usually. Yeah, it's all automated. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's kind of all I've got. Does anybody else have any questions? This is a short one. I thought this was going to go a lot longer. Um, your answers were so concise. If you could be a little more long-winded next time. That would or be just ramble on great. next time. All right. I'll, I'll try. Yeah. That, I thought you knew how this show works. <laughs> <laughs> like i brought three props today i was you know we were, we were limited that was a lot of props completely a lot of props for this show mm -hmm. um i will say congratulations on the new facility and and uh property i hope thank that goes you. really really well for you thank you we're, um, we're not like final final finalized but it's it's very exciting well there we go sending good vibes let's get it finalized um oh yeah Wally says, you're the best. Thank you for coming on tonight. Thanks, Wally. He's still supreme, but you're the best. Uh, who do we got here? <laughs> hey, Reed, Luch, 503, Pelly, everybody I forgot to say hi to already. Don's here. Oh, my gosh. That's a good night. Super helpful info. I don't see any. What's your favorite, Genesis, and why is it Venezuela? <laughs> That's a question for you. Oh, I'm about to disappoint this person. Uh, it's Armadillidium, and that's yes! that's that's where the zebras are, and they're the best. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, don't say yellow zebra. Don't do that on my show. Don't any zebras. Any. I zebras know that's your jam. Any color that you would like to call them. What other colors are there now? Um. So there's uh, also the champagnes that I made. And then uh, there's like whoa. chocolates, but like nobody's chocolates breed true that I've seen. It's just um, mutants. Lost me at zebra. <laughs> yeah, the champagnes, I think they're a hypo. I think they're hypo. Oh, okay. Talk, but, okay. Um, I didn't name them because they already existed in Europe, but. Um, the chocolates or the know. champagnes? No, the champagnes. Okay. So you but, isolated a strain here out of your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I have to go look at those. See, I, mean, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what I would name a beige zebra, so champagne works. Yeah. How and then there's the high bumblebee. whites. The high whites that some people call Dalmatians, but that's confusing because that indicates spotting to me. And like the high whites, it's, it's like the opposite. It's like more white. Yeah, I don't like I don't like the Dalmatians. Yeah. I don't think any of my viewers or people, none of my guests have called them Dalmatians. So if you are watching this and whatever, stop. Just stop. High whites is better. I agree. Yeah, um, I think that's just more descriptive of what they are. Um, yeah, I do notice I the different like breeders. Your of your favorites. 
No, no, I, so, I was just, I feel like I was forgetting one of the zebra variants, but I think we covered them all. Oh, yeah, yellow. Um, I just suggested some names for some people that had some new morphs of something, and they had their perspective name, and I was like, uh-uh, no, this is it. Do it right. Do it right. Name it this. Um, I'm glad that we held out for the red pandas or burnt orange pandas because, like, come on, it was right there. Yeah. Why would you, red pandas or orange? Why would you not call them that? I have five now. I have five yeah. red pandas in my, nice. in my nice. bin. Yeah, I'm separ I separated them, but I'm waiting to see if I get more in my main bin that, like, were juveniles or something. I haven't seen any more than the five, but I have the genetics in my culture, which is cool nice. and exciting. Nice. That's awesome. Um, so they might kick them out forever. The first time I saw one, I was like literally had a minor heart attack. I didn't know what to do with that information. I almost nice. dropped the bin, which would have been bad. <laughs> um, I've got a couple high whites I'm trying to isolate. What's your second favorite genocide? Why is it Venezuela? <laughs> we'll get there eventually. I don't. I mean, the Rollies, right? The Rollies are the best. I think, I mean, for me, the Rollies are where it's at. Um, yeah, the ones that can combobulate, so, right? Yeah, so so Venezuela, we're getting there. They're rollies. They're, they're just tiny rollies. That, which one is Venezuela? That's the Parvis, right? Venezuela Parvis? Yeah. Is that what I'm... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they... Just what? Tiny, Why would those be your favorite? Rollies. What? Oh, I want to know, see, see I wanna know why they're, they're your favorites, uh, Tennyson. We'll wait. Uh, yeah, Tennyson, what's the deal? Tennyson's going to come on and talk about um, classifications okay. with us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely, we're going to base the show on Venezuela Parvis. Um, if there's other Venezuelos that I don't know about. I'm so out of the game. I don't, people are always like, hey, look at this species. And I'm like, what are you talking? That's cool. That's cool. The spikies are the ones that I want now. But cappuccino is still like the top of my list. Can you actually hear the aficionados making their noise? Yes, Sandy, you can. I'll answer that for Rachel. You can hear the That's aficionados cool. make the. Little... I've never, I've never heard them make a noise, but I also haven't had them that long. I didn't really intentionally get them. Somebody brought them to me. So, oh, nice. That's a good. Yeah, uh, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Beetle Guy. Oh, I knew this was going to come up again. Beetle Guy likes Gigamorphus Rambambasham. Um, that's a, that's a species I just made up because I don't speak Latin, and it's come back to bite me. I love it almost every time. Yep. I have the best audience. Uh, Venezuela, Castle Black, and Maya. Ven Venezuela, what is this? Oaxacanus. Venezuela, Pisum. Pisum. I've seen pictures of the Castle Black. Uh, I've never seen them in person. And I haven't seen the other ones that you're talking about either. So, cool. I have no opinion on that, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah Venezuela, I, I had them for a while. I had the, um, the Dalmatian, I think. Is that one of them? Yeah, there's, a, there's a Dalmatian morph of Parvis. It was early on. It was early on when I started, and I saw them, and I was like, these are cool. They're dwarf isopods, but not. Um, and I put them in an ant farm. I put them in like a, a plastic thing that was about this wide and about this tall, and I filled it with different layers of... It has sphagnum on the bottom and then dirt, 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 but then like bits of uh, cork or bark or whatever so that I could see them and I could actually see them, but it was hard to keep it damp enough. So um, that was a hard one. I eventually stopped using it because it was like I had to tend them every day uh, and it had a little sleeve on it so they could think it was dark and it was cool to see them in that. But I don't know that I would keep them in a bin because you have to dig them out basically every time. Yeah. Um, as far as I know, I, I've never seen a setup where they were just out and about because that's not their thing. They're basically tiny head of Yeah, no, they're not. Brother Cornus. No, no. Um, but aficionalists definitely do that that thing. If you get the big ones, and I <laughs> I had heard they did it when I got mine, and I gave them a little like a, like a shake because <laughs> they ball up the second you open that bin. Do you guys have the same experience? With which ones? Like you crack the lid, the aficionalis. Yeah, yeah, they ball up. Yeah. As soon as you open the bin, they're like, oh, nope, never mind. I don't need to see you. Um, but yeah, when I shook them a little bit, they were like, I heard that little rattle and it kind of freaked me out. So yeah. I 
I don't know what causes it. If anybody knows what causes it, my assumption is they like rasp their legs on the inside of their uh, their shell there in the inside of the ball, but because I don't see any other uh, adaptations on them that would do it. You see your beef with red pandas. I did, tennis, and I saw your weird classification beef with red pandas. Um, let's see if we can go up. The flat butts on a fish analysis is the best part of Let's see if we can go up. He wants to see your beef, your thing on this beef. Ah, here we go. They're listed as red pandas. We suggest so. they're a separate species. His beef with red pandas is they're listed as species red pandas. Yeah, oh, I think well, the no, classification they're not. Thing. They're just, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're they're clearly not. They're isolated out of the regular pandas. But if none yeah, of them are listed with more. species names to begin with, it gets weird. So. Black pandas, that's another one that bothers me. <laughs> just black bear. Just black bear. I, just, I know. Why, it was right there. Messing around it was people? right there. I know. I know. Uh, I isolated those at the same time as a couple low. other people. And they, they went for black panda. And I was like, well, this is clearly wrong. But they were they were already doing it. And then I didn't want to gunk it up with, uh, you know, black pandas versus black bears. Because then people think they're two different things. So we don't want that. You could sell them as black panda slash black bear. Right? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. For sure. Uh, yeah. um, Josh Suds, a fellow Josh, wants to know what Millies you keep and um, what's your favorite Millie and why is it Venicillus? <laughs> <laughs> um, I keep a number of millipedes. Um, i trying to think what my favorites are. I really like the flame legs. Um, they're they're smaller and shorter lived, but man, are they pretty? Um, they are. They, have they are pretty pretty little legs. Um, I recently got the Spirostreptus species one, the globular millipedes, and I think those might be my new favorite. Um, they get really big, and they're very cool. I'm a big fan of those. So. Globular. Yeah. So so you know how millipedes normally. Yeah. So they normally curl Go up ahead. like when they when they coil up, it's like in a flat circle. But the spear streptus, they actually they they curl up in three dimensions. So instead of being like a disc, they kind of like pile on top of themselves. So they're called globular because it's just the shape of their their curl when oh, they curl like up that. in that That's defensive cool. position. Yeah, they're neat. That's a cool thing. I was gonna get some of those pink dragon ones. Yeah. Um, but they won't go. I, I wanted to put a millipede with my um, morning geckos that I'm going to get and okay. they won't, that's not a good idea because they're one of those cyanide producers and the morning yeah. geckos would probably yeah. feed on the babies. So I yeah. stopped. Um, but I, if I did get those, I don't know where I'd put them right now. So not going to get them. No more impulse buys. So um, I don't think Rachel plays D and D read. Um, a little bit. Just a tiny bit. A little bit. A little bit. Not a lot. While I run a game. I run a game, so let me know. Um, okay. It's very, uh, uh, what do we have? I don't know how to say it. A lot of innuendo. A lot of super inappropriate innuendo. So, because that's how I roll. Um, but, but, but white kings and panda kings? I don't know. I've never seen white kings, but I'm way out. Blackberry? Is blackberry a millipede? Not that I have. There's so many millipedes okay. that like there's just tons and tons of millipedes. Okay. Yeah, there are. There are. And I keep seeing more because now I'm friends with Kevin Nasser and mm -hmm. um, like legitimate friends. Yeah, he's and got it's... a really cool collection. Yeah. Yeah. Or he knows how to identify it. Like, mm -hmm. like what if he doesn't have it, he knows what it is. So, um, okay. Fish and always use their legs and their flat butts to, um, make the noise. I don't know the sound. What is, what is it called? I want to say rattle, but that's that's not the word, but that's what they do. Um, oh, my God. I need Russ on here. I always have the words in my brain, but they don't come out. Yeah. Like, what is it? Co conglobate? Is that the? That's when they roll up in a ball. Okay. So that's okay. not what you're looking for. Right, right. But I, I see, I, my problem is I try to be funny and I mess the word up on purpose. Stridulate. Stridulate. The beetle guy has got it for you. Yeah. Stridulation. Stridulation. Yes. All right. Thanks, yeah. guys. I knew somebody had have it. Um, 
There you go. Look at that. Five in a row. These guys were typing yeah. furiously to be the first Three one. different spellings, I think, of that. So that was, uh, take your pick. Three. Yeah. I was with Green Jedi Monkey. So, but I think Tennyson's way smarter than me. I think he got it right. It's the same as crickets. It's the same word as Chris. They're just farting. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear my crickets right now, but they say hello. Yeah, they uh, have right been saying now. hello. The best was when I had your friend Oren on. So Rachel introduced me to Oren, you guys, and that's how, well, she sent me his way. That's how I got to get Oren on the show. He had a cricket on the whole time, and after the show was over, we were talking, and he's like, are you going to ever kill that cricket? And I said, I don't I don't have crickets. It was, <laughs> it was, it was, it he wasn't annoyed the entire time. <laughs> You can see him looking around, and I was like, or, or being like a little huffy. And uh, yeah, he asked me about the uh, the crickets, uh, and it was his cricket. It was really funny. It was one of those moments. That's awesome. I should keep filming the after the post credits because they're usually pretty funny. Yeah. Um, we need Oren back. I tried to get Oren back to talk about scorpions, and he doesn't keep scorpions. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Oren's great. Oren's actually local to me, which is really cool. So yeah, that's what you're saying. You met him at a show. He just like walked up and you kind of didn't introduce out himself. Was. Just started talking to me, and so I realized like halfway through the conversation who he was, and then just like totally fangirled, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. So we're past that now. I, I see him regularly. You know, we're good. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had some people I met at the last uh, NARBC that I figured out who they were halfway through. And I was like, oh, it's weird who you become like weird fans of in this right. hobby. And yeah. like, you can't talk about it with anyone else except hobbyists because my wife is like, whatever, man, I please stop talking about bugs and bug people and your dumb show. Like um, 12 people know who this other person is that you're really excited to meet. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Well, I told her people recognized me at the last NARBC. Like I had like six people stop me. Well, a couple of people recognized me at the booths and then like three people stopped me walking around and like recognized my voice. And I'm like, are you ISO buddies? And I was like, well, yeah, yeah. Who's asking? Nice. Nice. <laughs> so we're going to have merch next time. We're going to actually have merch. So Very exciting. I'll have stuff on so people will know for sure. Um, what is Spirostreptus? Is that another disease going around right now? That's what I was just talking about, the, the, the globular millipedes. That's that, James. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. That blew right past me. Um, it is fun that everyone knows everyone in the hobby. But they don't. You guys don't understand. There's hundreds and hundreds of people in each, at least in each little branch of the hobby tree, the invert tree. It's There's so many people. Well, I mean, I don't know hardly anyone in the hobbies. Um. But I'm trying to branch out, obviously, to as many as I can. Gigas? Yeah. Gigas. Gigas are nice. I have some Gigas. They're great. Are you breeding them? Is that one of the ones that's really hard? Yeah, yeah, they're they're not easy. We're hoping. Okay. All right. That's when you know you're a successful millipede keeper. That's right. Yeah, that's that's it. You're a pro. Who's your flake soil hookup? I just use Ligardi millipede and ice pod substrate. And it worked okay. Yeah. And you I actually um, started I started uh I'm actually a dealer for Lugardi and I started being a dealer because I was buying so much of it for myself. Um specifically for the millipedes. Okay. I use it for the isopods too. I use it pretty much for all my bins. But the sure. millipedes just started going crazy when I started using that. So that's good stuff. Okay. I use the flake soil from well, I don't have millipedes, but I intend to use the flake soil from Bookie Down Bugs. Um, yeah. And I use Isopods Anonymous for my Isopods uh, almost exclusively. And my old batch that I still have fermenting. Um, Reed, I didn't catch the fourth person, but they're right over there. So uh, they're hanging out. <laughs> um, apparently one of the guys got caught in this uh, during the lockdown today. Sorry, we're back on that thing in Joliet. So um, the, the this is really funny. I found out they, they, the story kept progressing throughout the day of these four guys. Uh, they thought it was six guys at first, then it was five guys, then it was six guys again. Turned out to be four dudes in two cars. They stole both cars um, and were coming through Joliet for some reason. They live in Chicago. Um, and the fourth guy's still at large, as far as I know. Uh, but the third guy got caught because he was offering people $50 for a ride to Chicago. <laughs> somebody was like, nah, I can't right now, and went around the corner and just called the police. <laughs> so... 
I don't know that they didn't get the note that everyone was hip to these dudes being around. Um, wow. But they were real dumb. They did some real dumb stuff. I don't know how they evaded the police for so long. Um, yeah, I hope everybody's safe. I hope there's nobody like got a family at gunpoint or something. But they're all young guys. They're all young guys. But no, I don't, I don't, it was a little bit far. It was in my neighborhood. Like my neighborhood had helicopters and dogs and uh, like I had to go through a checkpoint. I had to go through like a checkpoint on my way to work today. And they were like flagging me through, but real slow. And then they were looking in the back of my van with the flashlights. So on each side of my car, it was a yeah. little creepy. Um, they were checking houses. They were knocking on doors to check people's houses and garages. It was a crazy morning. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't see them. An invert tree? Maybe Tennyson and I can work on that. Me and Tennyson and Beetle Guy can make the invert tree to see who, who's where. Um, like, I'm sure you probably know a lot of the, the millipede people, right? Rach? Yeah. Can yeah, I call you Rach? Are you there? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Is Rach um, appropriate? I know. That's totally fine. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's there's a lot of overlap in a lot of the the invert hobbies anyway. I mean, I keep a lot of stuff, and a lot of people keep a lot of stuff. So well, yeah, yeah. I showed you my space, and I have nothing. I'm a total amateur compared to everyone else, but I have like a dabble in everything. Um, I have one mantis left. I had to miss Malta again. Um, yeah, I don't do mantises. They're just they're sad. They're I, yeah. It'll live Black long enough. With I mantises. want them to live yeah. like five years. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. so sad. And once they hit adulthood, it's like, up. Oh, it's about to die. Like once they get their wings and they're not as cool when they get their wings, honestly. Um, yeah. I don't know as many people as I would like to, because I think I dabble too much in too many branches of the, the hobby. Um, <clears throat> and I, I forget people. <laughs> So I, I'm the worst. I am the worst. If you're not on my show once every three months, I don't know who you are anymore. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Who's this Oren guy? Well, I've heard about this Oren guy. Um, I may be the only person that ever interviewed him on the internet, but I don't know. Maybe. Um, I'm not going to be selling baby raccoons. Uh, yeah. They tore up my roof. I don't know if I told you. Um, who knows who? Massive native Pachydesmus crasticus. That'd be a great band name. Uh, are very cool and awesome. Uh, Josh, who who do you doubt knows you? They what? No, they're not using attack beetles. That's crazy. Um, starting with mantids, I just try not to think about their lifespan. If you breed mantises, it kind of, uh, what I want to say, offsets the lifespan because they breed so fast. But it's a hassle to raise <laughs> to raise 100 from babies. It's a hassle unless you're going to sell them or let them uh, free breed so they kind of eat each other. Um, yeah, Tennyson, I think that the tree, the, the invert tree would be just a project for fun. It would not be, yeah, I don't think anyone would take it seriously. Um, anyway, yeah, <laughs> we're way off topic, but it's been fun. <laughs> Nobody has any more questions about shipping. It doesn't seem covered, like it. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we've covered it all. Thank you for staying so long. I know you're busy. Um, tell Louis I said hi. I will. Um, I'll let him know. I appreciate it. After we go back, just, you know, we text. <laughs> You and Louie text. Oh, okay. Yeah, we text. That's, yeah, that's you don't cool. know he's does got he, your old phone. So, like, does he text with his beak or with his feet? Or like, he's got those Aflac, like, <laughs> he's got, he's got, little, little, he's goose, got a little, with, little goose yeah. thumbs. <laughs> he's got a little thumb on the on the elbow of his wing or whatever the wrist. I'm just like um, picturing him angrily pecking at the phone with his beak, like that's not what I said. <laughs> autocorrect. I want you to do fresh. videos from your farm, like that girl who has that emo. Um, yes. oh, Todd Emmanuel a, Lopez. Like, Emmanuel, yes. yes. Emmanuel, yes. why are you doing this to me? It's Emmanuel those are the best Lopez, videos yeah. online. Yeah, he's period. great. Did he yeah. die? No, he was really sick for a while though, but he did not die. Okay, to, to my knowledge, I thought yeah. he was going to die. Uh, Reed, you cannot ship anything from Florida. I'm sorry. We don't accept anything out of Florida anymore. I'm sorry. 
Florida's closed. Um, it doesn't. No, <laughs> no. Can can you ship out of Florida? I know you can't ship into Florida, really. You can ship some things in Florida. I don't Florida. know. Just depends on what it is and what they allow. Yeah, you should can for sure ship out of Florida. Man, do I want to make some awful jokes right now? But they're super political, and I don't want to do that. Uh, <laughs> they are funny though. Uh, just no. Um, yeah, that's all I got, Rach. That's it. So I hope you had as much fun as I did. We had some good yeah, laughs. thanks for having me on. Always, always, always. As soon as somebody started mentioning shipping, I was like, I got to reach out to Rachel. That was the very first person. Um, I've had other greatly shipped items, especially recently, but you were the original and I knew you had the story personally of my horrible shipping. So I knew that would go over. Yeah, I will always admit my mistakes. Yeah, yep. Um, so yeah, thank you. Tell uh, Travis I said hi too. So will do. Um, you guys are... The guys, if you see them at the shows, they are the cutest couple you'll ever meet. So just heads up. Um, see if Rachel brought her flu with her next time. So that would get people to your booth. That, that sure would. That sure yeah. would. Do a little fluting. What do they call it? Do a, well, play some flute. There's not I mean, the verb. It's, just, it's not really a verb for that. Flute. Yeah. Fluting. Sure. Why not? Fluting. <laughs> just toot your flute. Can you Shooting. take the flute? Tooting. Shooting the yeah, flute. Sure, there you okay. go. All right. <laughs> we nailed it. I, I did it again. We're coming up with phrases. <laughs> Got so, it. all right. We'll see you next time. And it shouldn't be, well, it'll probably be a little while, but we'll see you next time uh, when Sounds you get good. more experience with jumping spiders. You're my person. <laughs> Perfect. So far. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Rachel. Good night. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. What a great guest. So, guys, <clears throat> we have a little bit of time uh, to hit our hour and a half mark, but I just wanted to give you a quick update. So, I gave this to Rachel. So, this is the 120 behind me. This is oh, nope, this this is the original studio area where we shot from before. You can see it's in disarray. Um, the basement's being redone. So, we have all the stands. We have the tank section's going to be over here. There's going to be a 55 over here with the newts. Um, there's going to be morning geckos here right now. It's a tarantula and a, the ant mantis, um, and some isopod bowls. Uh, this is another isopod bowl, the shrimp that's going to stay there. Isopods are going to be behind that on that second one by the chair. Um, we are going to be shooting from here. I haven't set it up yet to see. So, um, and then the canopy is going to be, sorry about the light. The canopy is going to be up there. So, um, a lot of changes happening in a short amount of time. So um, stick around, guys. Patreon helps to support all this change. I'm just saying it's kind of for you guys. So um, you'll be able to see these builds as they progress. So this is where we're at right now with uh, Sheila's new tank. Her old tank is right behind it. So you can see the difference is pretty stunning. Um, but yeah, this is her new tank. And it's a work in progress, but we're getting there. So um, there's going to be fish below White Cloud Mountain Minnows and Corydoras. So, uh, yeah, so that's where we're at. So I'll keep you posted on the pictures and keep you going on where we're going. Uh, yeah, this light sucks. It's my temporary. It's not the light that I use. It's not even temporary. It's just my ceiling light. So it gives me a halo. Oh, I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. So this is all going away. If you guys are interested in a lock, let me know. Uh, there'll be $49.99. <laughs> so... We're going to have merch soon. Luch, uh, Carlucci is going to be doing our merch. Um, special thanks to him and to Ruby Sosa, who redid the logo, which is going to be on all of the merch. And we'll have some different things. We're going to have Jaglone t-shirts. We're going to have the ISO Buddies t-shirt. We're going to have, well, Henleys. We're going to put it on Henleys. Okay, guys. Uh, we're going to have Gigamorphous Rambambasham. If you want to submit a drawing of what you think Gigamorphous Rambambasham looks like, send it to me on Facebook. Um, and we will consider them. We'll have a vote on which one we like as that species. So, um, or, or I don't know, come up with something, make it, have your kid draw it. I don't care. Um, I want to see some fun, cute stuff. So uh, we will talk to you later. I love you guys. Uh, Thursday episode is not happening. We're not doing the Bigfoot on Thursday. Uh, Justin has some stuff going on. So um, we'll do it again. We are going to do it again next week. I forget who it is, but it'll be good. I'll, <laughs> I don't know who it is. Let's see. Do I have it on here? I should. Bear with me. Next week, we're talking to Kevin Nasser about dung beetles, supposedly. So we'll see if he actually comes on. 
So uh, I love you guys. Seriously, best audience ever. So we will talk to you later. We are going to do the Bigfoot, just not yet. Okay, soon, soon. I love you guys. We'll see you next week. Kevin Nasser.